Well, welcome to this evening's second panel, uh, Site Supervisor Panel Presentation, actually, where our students will learn about many of the opportunities that are available to them for the spring semester. During this section, we have uh, five different uh, opportunities represented. Uh, I'm afraid our first presenter uh, from Pasadena Public Library was not able to attend, but we will quickly move through those slides and then we will um, begin the presentation uh, with uh, Richard from the Natural uh, History Museum in Los Angeles. We'll hear from Stephen Parr at Oddball Film and Video. He's an old hand at this. And then Jane from Fullerton County. College Library and Chris from Monterey County Free Library. So we should have a very interesting evening. You see my picture down below, Dr. Pat Franks, just call me Pat, and uh, Melissa LaFranchise, the student assistant who uh, gets all of the credit for putting this panel presentation together uh, this evening. Uh, right now, I'll just mention that uh, Dan and Martha uh, put together some slides for Pasadena Public Library. Uh, where uh, they talk about the public library in a community that treasures both its library and its history. Uh, there is some internship information that would be available through our database, so be sure to look for the scanning project director uh, job title. Uh, they are looking for students uh, that I'm sure we're all looking for, that love to work independently, apply rules and guidelines, uh, work in iterative uh, training sessions and situations, and have an interest in history and historical research. And uh, there is contact information. If any of you uh, would like to learn more about it, you can use the email there to find out more. I'm sorry they could not be with us. But right now, we'll move on to Richard Hustler from National uh, Natural History Museum in Los Angeles County. And I'm going to turn the mic right over to Richard. You have the arrow keys that you can push to move your slides. And if you have a problem, let us know and we'll move them for you. Richard? OK, thanks, Pat. And um, as uh, Pat said, I'm Richard Hulser. I'm the Natural History Museum, Los Angeles County Chief Librarian. And we'll get right into this. Um, the Natural History Museum of Los Angeles is actually a family of museums. It is the uh, Exposition Park campus. It is the uh, La Brea Tar Pits Page Museum. And it's the Hart Museum up in the northern part of Los Angeles County. And uh, the research library is considered a specialized cultural institution library. Uh, the, the large library is located at the Exposition Park location. We also do have a library at the Page Museum, which I was at this afternoon, as well as a small collection over at the Hart. So uh, the pictures you see before you on the right-hand side are pictures of the library as it is now. And although it's changing daily with the help of all my wonderful volunteers, which I'll get to in a second. And uh, we have subject collections that are in selected areas of natural history, ranging from vertebrate paleon child and paleontology, including dinosaurs, one of our new uh, dinosaur exhibits in the lower left, as well as to the other end of the spectrum, uh, history and ar archaeology and anthropology, represented by our new Becoming Los Angeles Hall with uh, the Charlie Chaplin costume, among other many other artifacts on display at the Natural History, history Museum in the lower middle part of the picture. The uh, internship information, there's lots of different projects. Uh, if you uh, take cataloging and are interested in cataloging or metadata or any information organization or anything of those and anything like those, uh, there's plenty to do at my place. Uh, I have several interns uh, from different institutions, including San Jose State's program, doing copy cataloging, as well as um, teaching them how to do some original uh, cataloging with unusual artifacts. We also have a retrospective catalog conversion project uh, with Dewey to LC that is a multi-year ongoing thing that we do when we can. Uh, we also have, uh, from in the realm of digital libraries and websites, uh, we the museum does publish its own peer-reviewed uh, journal, and we've scanned that, and we're scanning other uh, publications of the museum and making them full text keyword searchable, and the intern would, could be involved with that. We are also developing a number of digital libraries using uh, OCLC ContentDM, uh, 
as well as our library system, EOS in this case, based out of Carlsbad, which they're, with their knowledge builder tool, as well as uh, typical MARC records from OCLC. Uh, we also have an external presence on the museum's website that is constantly doing uh, having updates, and I recently did a major website redesign that uh, is available for experience. Uh, for those of you interested in research and proposal writing for funding support, that would be great. In fact, uh, what most people don't realize is you can write a grant and get yourself funded to be paid by whatever funding agency or entity and come work for me. That would be wonderful. I'd love it. You'd love it. It'd be great. Uh, Global Research Publications Exchange Program, we, we have almost 600 different um, institutions globally, every language, every alphabet is represented uh, from the Middle East to the Far East to uh, the South, everywhere to the North. So uh, that's always a lot of interesting fun. We have special collections including maps, uh, many maps and art uh, in our uh, collections that we are creating digital libraries for as well as there are conservation issues and management issues that you would get exposed to. And we do, with our special collections, we are doing another more granular inventory, uh, creation of finding aids for those interested in archiving kinds of uh, projects. That would be good, as well as potential digitization. We're getting a new copy stand in the near, or, or a copy stand, it's not brand new, it's old, but uh, into the library really soon to digitize some amazing 18th, uh, 19th century uh, large folios. Um, with it, we created the internship, or I created the internship as a shared experience for student and museum to learn and help each other as it says there. Uh, the museum is a research and education focused institution and internships provide a vehicle for information and skills transfer both ways. I learn a lot, you learn a lot, uh, it's always interesting, it's always dynamic. The uh, internship qualifications are uh, the following, it, it's uh, no pay. Unfortunately, unless you write a grant and you get paid that way, that would be great. Uh, it's through the volunteer program at the museum and I supervise, I have an MLS uh, as well as an MED, uh, so uh, I supervise all interns whether I lend them out to other departments or stay in the library. The skills I'm looking for are an ability to apply your, apply your education, both current LIS education as well as any past experience in whatever topics. Uh, you might have studied whether it's social sciences, art, dance, um, theater, science, science would be great, history would be great, anthropology would be great in particular, uh, to, and uh, apply them to practical tasks. Uh, I do look for people who can work independently but also as a team player on small projects because I do have folks work with other folks uh, who are either volunteering or interning as well as work on their own specific projects. Uh, the library experience is helpful. Uh, some of you probably have worked in libraries, others never touched foot in the library other than to use it as far as uh, no work experience anyway and uh, that's not required but it's helpful. And as I said, science, history, or anthropology background helpful, again, not required. And successful interns combine the needs of their classes and their career aspirations into projects. And I work very uh, hard to make sure that um, we work with your goals and learning objectives to make sure that everybody wins. And uh, my contact information is on the screen there. You can either call me or uh, even fax me if you want. Uh, uh, email me with any questions you might have. Uh, one of the, some of the key points is uh, it is an on-site uh, internship that, uh, and I do that because a lot of what we have really requires you to understand and uh, work with the physical uh, collection. Uh, although part of your internship could be done remotely in a virtual uh, instance, uh, so that's possible. If you have a project for a class you want to do that's virtual, we can talk about that as well. You can do it for uh, credit or not for credit, that's up to you. I'm okay either way and we can talk about that as well. You must be within a reasonable commute distance of the museum which is based in uh, Exposition Park, uh, just uh, south of the USC uh, campus uh, near uh, the uh, Olympic Stadium. 
And uh, if you, uh, I've had people from as close as a few blocks away to as far as Santa Clarita or as south as far as Long Beach. So anything that you can tolerate is good for me. Uh, contact me to set up an on-site visit appointment to review your options and actually understand uh, what the, the library the museum and the library is all about and uh, get the museum volunteer application paperwork so that you can fill that out. And as I said, internships can be for academic credit or not credit. It depends on what your needs are. And uh, that's it. Well, thank you very much, Richard. Um, I especially um, was grateful that you mentioned the fact that students can write research grants in some instances in order to fund their own position, uh, at least on a temporary basis with your uh, organization with a, a natural um, history museum. So it's really quite exciting. Uh, and uh, what we're going to do now is hold our, our questions and move on to the next presenter. I see his picture right on the screen here, uh, Stephen Parr from Oddball Film and uh, Video. And Stephen's going to talk about a different type of internship, uh, virtual, although he may also have some on-site opportunities. So right now, let me turn the mic over to Stephen. Hi, everybody. Um, here's a picture of myself in a very small part of our 50,000 uh, print archive. And, um, we have much more as well. Um, our company essentially provides stock footage for producers who make feature films, uh, documentaries, music videos, uh, projects uh, like The Movie Milk uh, by Gus Van Zandt that use a lot of archival footage, uh, programs like Mythbusters that explore the uh, cutting edge of uh, um, uh, old and new science, um, programs like the American Experience, things like that. Um, essentially, we've provided footage for many of the major documentaries that you see uh, out there. Um, our internships involve um, cataloging films in the Oddball database uh, using WorldCat, the um, catalog of uh, films, the World Catalog of Films. Uh, the Internet Archive and other online resources. Uh, logging quick times, which are essentially a preview clips that we keep in our database to um, send to clients uh, and other uh, producers interested in viewing our materials. Um, we also have other projects involving research, uh, researching footage requests using publicly available resources. Um, the Library of Congress, the National Archives, um, places like that. Um, in terms of the virtual internships, uh, we've been doing this for a number of years and we've been quite successful at uh, doing so. Uh, mo many of our interns um, move on to other positions either in schools like the, um, the uh, Selznick School of uh, Film Preservation, uh, New York University School of um, uh, moving Image Preservation and um, the UCLA Moving Image Archiving Program. Um, some of our other interns are now um, working at the Library of Congress, the Academy Film Archive in Los Angeles, and um, previously at Lucas Films. Uh, what you're looking at is a QuickTime database. Um, what you can see is probably a silhouette of um, some go-go dancers from the 1960s selling spark cards. Uh, it's a really kind of a campy pop type commercial. Um, a lot of times people use things like that when they're making uh, music videos or uh, documentaries about the 60s. So essentially what people do is we send them um, clips and they um, they basically incorporate the metadata under the subject category, the synopsis, the content, the keywords, um, and other parameters. It's fairly simple. It's fairly straightforward. Now, if someone was interested in a real-time, uh, uh, on-site um, internship, uh, those are a bit more rigorous. You get a lot of hands-on experience with film itself, transferring film, uh, digitizing film, 
and incorporating the metadata into the database. Um, it's really, in, in my mind, one of the best ways to get this kind of experience. Uh, my, my experience has taught me that very few um, archives like ours are willing to have um, on-site internships simply because the film prints and the media is, is too valuable and rarefied to be used uh, by, by newcomers. Uh, we don't believe that that's true, um, and we've proven it by uh, allowing interns into the archives. Um, our last two on-site inter interns, uh, well, these, they weren't actually our last two, but uh, about a year and a half ago, uh, both were accepted into the Selznick School of Film Preservation. Uh, they only accept 12 students a year. They get 200 applications. One of them received the Sony Pictures Scholarship Award to the Association of Moving Image Archivists uh, this year. And um, so it's, it's, it's a really great way to learn uh, how, to, how to work with film, how to work with videotape, and how to work with digital media. Um, this is an example of our database. Um, it, it incorporates uh, a lot more parameters than the QuickTime um, um, database does. Uh, we're in the process of revamping all our databases. We have about 12 databases. We're going to be revamping them into a, a very smooth uh, architecture so that when someone is entering this information uh, in-house here, it will go right up to our website. Um, the qualifications we're looking for really are someone who's self-directed with the ability to work independently, and that is someone that takes the initiative. If they're interested in this program, um, they'll call, they'll email, they'll, they'll follow through in every aspect of, of the, the process. Um, so that in, in addition, uh, they should be well organized and detail oriented. It goes without saying that anytime anyone's entering information in a database, that that's critical. Um, you spell a word wrong, you file a film in the wrong place, you never find it again. So you'll need some excellent written and communication skills. Um, you need to be reliable and independent. And you need to really be interested in doing this. It shouldn't be something that you just want to try out. It's something that you should be, have read enough about and have learned enough about in terms of um, what's, what's out there, what you want to do to uh, move forward. Um, so that's really what I mean by goal-oriented. If you're interested uh, at all, if you have any questions, I'm always happy to uh, answer them. If you live in the area and you, you still want to do a virtual internship, and that's happened before because many of us have to work during the day and they, they do the internship in the evening, I'll be happy to give you a tour of the archive. Um, at, at a time agreeable to both of us. So again, if you're interested, please feel free to email me at info at oddballfilm.com. Thanks very much for your time. Thank you, Stephen. Uh, as usual, I enjoyed your presentation. And as Stephen mentioned in the past, uh, we have had a virtual intern or two uh, plan their uh, break over the uh, winter here now uh, to stop by and visit Stephen and see uh, where he's doing his work while they uh, do their work in the spring from home. Uh, so thank you for your presentation, and uh, we'll move right on now to Jane Ishibashi from Fullerton uh, College Library, and she'll talk about the internship position that they have available there on site. Jane? Thank you, Pat. Uh, my name is Jane Ishibashi, and uh, I'm the Circulation Archives Librarian at the Community College, and I'll be supervising the intern. My background is that I got my bachelor's at UCLA, and when UC Berkeley had the master's in library and information science, I got my master's there. I also completed the Society of California Archives, Western Archives Institute. Um, the internship at Fullerton College, which is located in 
Fullerton in Orange County, not to be confused with Cal State University Fullerton, will be primarily in the archives. It's a small collection that documents the history of the community college. This year is actually a good year to be doing an internship because it's our centennial year. And the intern will be helping to document the history of this important year's events, as well as to assist with processing materials from previous years. We have ephemera that needs to be sorted, organized, labeled, and rehoused. And the ephemera can include promotional flyers, announcements for workshops, building inaugurations, theater posters, and blueprints. And the top photo shows the library as it is now, and the photo below is a photo of the library from our, our, our archives. So um, some of the things that are possible is that since 2009, an adjunct librarian and I have been working on an online pictorial history of the college. And I've put the URL on the screen. You'll see it. It's um, librayfchistory.focal.edu. And the entrance projects may include photographing the activities on campus that are being um, held for the centennial, selecting photos, adding captions, and uploading the files to Slideshow Pro, which is the platform we're using for the online history. Um, since we're in our centennial year, we would also like the intern to work on some outreach activities. And this would be a discussion with the intern, but it, some of the possibilities would be creating a display around the centennial theme using materials from the archives. We've also purchased licensing for Animoto Pro and Common Craft, and we're purchasing some other equipment to make some uh, information literacy online videos for distance ed students. But I'd like to have uh, somebody's creative to create some online videos so that we could promote the online history and the archives. So that would be another possible project. And then in recognition that, like me, it's not unusual for a librarian to work double duty as a librarian and an archivist, um, I went to a actual um, managing interns workshop in UC Riverside, and I got some ideas about how to handle the interns. And I'd like to incorporate some other activities for the intern. Um, so the intern will also get an opportunity to observe reference interviews and receive tips at the reference desk from the librarians working there, interviewing the librarians on staff to learn about the different positions in Fullerton College Library and also observing information literacy classes, writing a brief evaluation of the instructional methods of the different librarians, because we all have our different styles. And sometimes uh, there's um, on-hand work during the information uh, literacy classes, so the interns will help answer individual questions that the students have while they're doing their research on certain projects. Um, what we're looking for, of course, everybody's looking for self-motivated workers able to work independently. I would you know, preferably have some kind of archival coursework or even experience, but experience isn't necessary. And successful interns have been detail-oriented self-starters who enjoy local history, honesty, integrity, and um, familiarity with um, social media would be good. And then. If you know if you're creative, of course, we've got the outreach activities that would be good. Um, our fall semester is going to end on December 13th. So if you could possibly contact me about your interest in the spring semester uh, internship, it would be preferably before December 13th. I'm off until uh, the week before we start, but I will be checking my emails to see if anybody's trying to set up an appointment for an interview, but the sooner you get it in, the better. I'll be setting up informal interviews in January during our break. I'll be coming in. I'm not actually working until we start uh, our spring semester. but. You can send me a letter of interest, unofficial transcripts, and a resume with some references. And there's my contact information at the top. And I hope that some of you will be interested, and I look forward to hearing from you. Thanks.
Thank you very much, Jane. Uh, this is the perfect time to work in uh, your archives uh, at the library with the centennial. Uh, it should be exciting. And uh, not only having a chance to uh, digitize or post photos, but also to actually take them uh, should be a lot of fun for a creative intern. So I do hope that uh, some of our students express an interest in this opportunity. Uh, next, we're going to go to our uh, Last presenter of this evening, uh, Chris Ricker, who's going to speak about the opportunities at Monterey County Free Libraries. So Chris, uh, you're welcome to take the mic. Thank you very much. Um, I'm pleased to say that I'm a graduate from San Jose State University's Library School back in 1994. Um, and I do work now for Monterey County Free Libraries, and we're a really kind of I think amazing uh, library system with 17 branches and three bookmobiles. And we just celebrated our uh, 100th anniversary in um, just a year ago. And we're a very diverse uh, service area. We um, have branches in Big Sur, um, south part of Monterey County, which includes a lot of uh, farm labor communities. Um, we have a branch in Soledad, which has uh, one of the California missions located there. So it's about 3,000 square feet in um, overall service space. So we do a lot with um, a pretty lean staff, but everybody is very, very passionate. So, um, I mean, sorry, I missed my first slide, but you can see here in this uh, historical photograph our first county librarian, Ann Haddon, and she established Monterey County Free Libraries about 101 years ago, and this is a picture of her um, delivering books to Big Sur. So she would pack up her burrow and uh, head out into the hills for, you know, really days at a time and deliver uh, books to individual houses or, um, you know, if there was a school or a post office and she would set up these small little uh, outposts. So that's kind of the uh, beginning of our library system, and in some ways it, you know, feels, we still feel connected to her. Some of our libraries are really um, tiny and, you know, there's rumors that some were established in chicken coops. Probably some of our staff still feel like they li or work in a chicken coop, but um, anyway, it's, it's kind of a fun library system to work with. Uh, we, thankfully, through Ann Haddon, have quite a collection of historical photographs. We have about 1,200 photographs that came from kind of her time. Um, most of them are, you know, pre-1940s. So we have them digitized, but um, in a format that's it's they're JPEGs, and um, we really need to have better source images, and they also need to be, you know, formally cataloged. And we have purchased a content management system, which is OCLC's Content DM, and we'd like to get that collection up um, online. So this, what we're looking for is someone to help us kind of get these images up and online and available to the public. And I think they will just be greatly received by the public. So there will be a lot of, uh, I think, rewards in terms of service by uh, working with us on this project. Um, we do have just a, a rough policy and procedure um, for our photo archive collection in terms of you know, getting a person's signature on how they're going to use the items. There's a, a form and uh, we do even have a small fee for usage. But those are things we're uh, looking at again as we put this collection online. So I think for an intern, it's really a wonderful opportunity to really collaborate with management directly on a real world uh, policy. Uh, for making these um, images available to the public. So that's really rewarding because it is a, a policy that will, 
you know, be around for a year or two and really help guide us. So I think that's a, a really good um, experience uh, for an intern to have and we would certainly uh, benefit by your help. So we are really also looking for someone who's interested in um, digital archives, someone that has some familiarity with um, current standards. We do have a fairly good knowledge of it ourselves, but we just really need uh, someone to work with us to formalize those. So. Um, I really would encourage anyone uh, who is interested to please, you know, send me an email about your interest. Uh, we could accommodate an off-site um, internship or on-site. Uh, it would probably be, it would be great if we could have you here and have you see these wonderful um, resources that we have. So I thank you so much for your time and I hope to hear from some of you soon. Thank you. Thank you very much, Chris. Oh, I love that picture. <laughs> um, this sounds like another exciting time to be involved uh, with the Centennial uh, recently. Uh, the uh, digitization projects, the use of Content DM, uh, as I said before, are uh, skills that are looked for in job openings, uh, job listings now. And uh, not to forget, though, that the policy development and the use of standards are, uh, form the basis for those types of projects. And so I'm so glad that you're also emphasizing that type of work. Uh, I'm going to uh, turn this over now to our uh, final slide, which is for questions. Uh, and it doesn't just have to be student questions, but anybody at all wanting to know about any of the uh, topics that were touched on today. Uh, you see the slide on your screen with our presenters. The first is not here, but uh, the uh, second through fourth uh, R or fifth R. So if anybody has a question, uh, please raise your hand by clicking on the hand icon right underneath your name. It's the third hand in, uh, third icon in. Uh, you could uh, put your question in the chat area. We could read it off for you. Or if you have a mic, you can uh, raise your hand and we'll give you the mic. And I hear somebody right there, so I'm going to look and see. Stephen, go ahead. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay, hi, this is a question for Richard. Uh, I'm curious because many interns uh, I'm really in, in, in need of funds, and um, um, I think the idea of, of having someone uh, learn to write grants is a really good skill set to have. Uh, we've written another, a number of grants uh, for my nonprofit, the San Francisco Media Archive, and I'm curious if, if there are any resources that you might have, any grants that might be available that, that students could write um, for um, for some self-funding. Um, thanks, Stephen. Um, there are several, the IMLS, uh, the Institute for Museum and Library Services out of the federal government uh, does have grants available for individuals in addition to institutions. Uh, there are also, uh, we subscribe to the foundation directory which um, I would have our interns um, take a look at because it lists a lot of private foundations as well as uh, governmental type uh, that are available. And what most uh, students don't understand, and I didn't when I was a student either, so it's not something that, <laughs> you know, to worry about, is that there's so much money out there and there's money for people who are in a master's program uh, and you just got to find it, that's the difficulties and sometimes there's ethnicity requirements, sometimes there's just uh, subject area requirements and um, I did have a student last year who uh, was in a grant writing class and so she wrote a initial uh, outline uh, of a grant uh, related to something that we needed at our museum, it wasn't to do with funding a staff person. But um, the Getty is uh, a place that once a year offers uh, several grants uh, that uh, I would suggest 
folks look at. And uh, I did have an intern of mine who happened to be from another school program, UCLA, uh, <laughs> who uh, did get uh, funded. And she was funded and paid for eight months uh, full-time work. So, uh, you know, after she uh, worked with me. So, uh, you know, there you go. There, there are a couple of different options there. Thanks a lot, Richard. I really appreciate it. I do know about the Foundation Center, and it's a really great resource uh, for any other potential um, uh, people who are who are looking for interns to to perhaps line up some funds as well and uh, make make the position even more appealing. Well, thank you to both of you for talking about that topic. Perhaps that's something that Melissa made a note to remind me uh, that we should actually look at to see if we could provide more resources for our students uh, to be able to look into those opportunities too. I appreciate that. Uh, I see Amy is uh, closing her browser because she's on, on the East Coast. FMI is about five minutes to 11 here for us, so it's, it's a little late in the evening. Um, if there was one other thing I think that uh, was mentioned, maybe Chris, it was you, that you had attended a workshop for intern site supervisors. And uh, was it you um, or was it Jane? I think that was Jane. What was the question? Jane, did you mention that you had attended a workshop for internship site supervisors? Oh, right, at UC Riverside just a couple weeks ago. They had an a internship about managing interns. So I, I'm probably going to do things a little bit differently than I've been done in the past, doing a little bit more um, monitoring and trying to um, spend more time with the interns than I have in the past. <laughs> That's, uh, that sounds like something I, I should look into as well, uh, just to see if there's something that we could do to help our interns a little more, our internship site supervisors. Um, do we have any other questions for our presenters? I realize it's late in the day for uh, most of us. Okay, if not, I want to thank the site supervisors and everyone who attended and participated this evening. And uh, we will be posting the recording uh, link as well as the webcast of the recording um, within a day or so. And uh, I hope that you'll consider applying for uh, one of these internships. Thank you very much. Good night. <laughs>